Hey guys, here's a little step-by-step -step task today just to add some loops to a project and just build up a bit of a beat using different loops from the Looperman website. Our first step is to go to looperman.com and if you haven't already registered, you should register. Sign up using the register button here, put in your details, use your school email address is fine. Just note that it will send a confirmation email to confirm your account into your junk email box. So you have to check in the junk folder and once you've confirmed, you can log in. Now once you've logged in, you can actually download the loops that we find. So our first step after logging in is to head to this loops and samples area and we're going to do a keyword search for drums. So having just done that, it's brought up a few results. Let's just have a listen through some of these results here. Let's check out the house drums. Let's go house today. I'm going to download that one. It takes us to the download page for this loop and we do have to hit download again. So I'm just going to hit save. It's got a name here which describes what it is. I've hit save. We're next going to import this into a new Reaper session. So load up Reaper and create a new project. Then we've currently got nothing in the project. Let's insert a media file which is in my downloads folder and you see it there. You could sort this folder by recency. So it's good to have the details and do sort by, um, if it doesn't show you the date, which is quite annoying, then you go in as I'm just doing now and I'm choosing date modified and I will use that to sort my different things in the downloads folder. It's just very annoying when you're trying to create a project, you keep having to search for what you've just downloaded. So sorting it by the date modified is a really good idea. Okay, so let's import that loop. We did note that it was a four bar loop in Looperman when we saw one, two, three of those bar lines, it means there's four bars worth of music. And it says the original tempo is 124 beats per minute, which is why back in Reaper, with our project set at 120, it doesn't actually reach the end of the fourth bar. So if we were to actually like create loops of this, they're all going to be a little bit out of time, uh, which is not great. We want everything to match the project grid for our ease of editing. So here's a really quick easy tip for you. Just go to the end of the clip where it would trim normally, but we're not going to trim it. We're actually going to hold Alt and bring up the time stretch hand and just drag it over. Now we've stretched it. It's actually going to play at the rate of 0.968 of its original speed, the original tempo, which listen to this with the metronome. Take my word for it that because we couldn't hear the metronome then is actually a really good indicator that it's perfectly in time. So now that we've imported that drum loop, We've made it fit perfectly within that four bars. We can actually stretch it out, um, noting that every time it, the four bars is crossed, you get that little divot. It just shows that this is actually looping itself. The next step, we could try a few different tempos. We could actually say, well, originally it was 124. And now note that it's taken away the different playback rate information. But we might say, hey, let's go real fast, like 150. Or we might say, let's slow this down. When you slow things down, it does have a risk of the quality degrading. Keep in mind, every time we change the tempo now, it's just adjusting the playback rate of the clips. So they still fit within the, the bar structure we've got here. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to 120 for now. And we're gonna now consider downloading a second loop. So let's go back to Looperman. Let's go back to our search page. I've clicked on loops and samples, search free loops. Didn't have to click that one. And I'm going to choose bongos. Let's see what comes up with a search for bongos. I can imagine that fitting quite well with our house beat. So I'm just going to say, yeah, let's grab that one. It takes us to a download page and we have to click download once more for it to actually download. 
save that, go back to Reaper, and I'm going to create a new track. And with that new track selected, I'm going to insert a media file and choose the bongos. Now you see it's actually a stereo track with bongos and congas in the left and right, which should sound pretty cool because it's already got some stereo panning going on. Looking at the, um, the loop, see how it's a four bar loop here with an original tempo of 140 beats per minute? which is why at the tempo of 120, it doesn't line up with our bar lines. So once again, you might remember our little trick, we just hold Alt, and that hand comes up to tell us we're gonna be able to time stretch. And we can actually just time stretch it to make it occupy the four bars. And then we can go back, press W to rewind and hit space. and they fit together really well, don't they? If we want that bongo to continue, we're just gonna drag it out, make it loop itself. You know, we've got our 12 bars worth of music there, but really it's just a four bar loop repeated so far. So next, we're actually gonna get some other kind of loop. Now this is actually bongos and congas. So let, let's have a look for a shaker. We're gonna go back to loops and samples. We're gonna search here for shaker. Now we could actually check the categories and we could choose the percussion category just to make sure that we're getting what we want. Fine loops. Here's a cocktail shaker. Nice, it's got some little accents. What else have we got? That one sounds all right as well. So I would choose between the top one. In fact, let's get both of them. So we'll grab the cocktail shaker. Save that one. I'll go back to that previous page and I'm gonna get this shaker as well. So we've just downloaded those two shaker parts. Let's bring them in and see what they sound like on a new track. In fact, another way to do this, if we haven't created the track yet, if we just bring up the file explorer of that folder and grab those two shakers. There's one of them and here's the other one and drag them in to our project, putting them on separate tracks. One of them actually has some tempo information embedded, but I will choose to adjust the media based on my tempo and that will save us one step. So let's hear how that fits together. So those shakers there, just making them sit in there nicely. Um, at this point, I'd just like to give some color to my project. So I'm gonna uh, click on one of these tracks, shift click down here and do track color and set them to random colors. I just like the look of it a bit better. Um, let's bring in another kind of loop. Another category of loop could be a baseline. So let's go back to the loop man area, go back to the search for free loops and we could do a category search. Let's just search for bass. So let's try a bass, just bass in general and find loops. Here's a funky bass, I like the sound of that. Looking at the um, waveform, it may be a bit quiet, not the best signal to noise ratio, but it could be funky. Let's check it out. No, I'm not such a fan of that one. Let's try this one here. So there's a lot of stuff that's not just bass. See that one to me seems like a good foundation. Let's download that one and insert that media file, the most recent one. It also has tempo information which saves us the step of having to use the alt hand tool and dragging it. See how it fills up exactly four bars. It's, it's finishing at 5.1 and I'll drag it out. Let's have a listen. Just 
know that our overall fader here is peaking out. So the sum of all those tracks is a little bit loud. If I'm happy with the balance, then I would just actually uh, select them all and let's just bring them all down about two decibels and have a look, see if we're peaking out. No, now it's at a safe negative value there. It's getting a bit close. Our bass can probably come down a touch anyway. All right, that's starting to take shape. Now we might consider we want some kind of a, uh, a synth or a piano or something, you know. Let's have a look for a, uh, a keyboard. So how about we just go to the category. Now they have a piano category or a Rhodes piano category, depending if you want to get a funky electric piano. Um, we'll just try an acoustic piano. Find loops and have a listen to this one. Yeah, it's got a very different sort of vibe, which I'm actually going to try that one. Let's get it. It says that's in D minor. Our um, other loop was in unknown key, and I haven't actually checked out what key it was in. So let's just bring in, create a new track, and bring in that piano loop, which should be the most recent one, and have a listen to how it sits. Now, we do note that it actually uh, goes through to like a strange part, like a little bit more than eight bars or seven bars. So just go back to here, see how it says it's four bars. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it should actually fit into eight of our bars, which means it should finish at bar nine. So I'm going to hold alt to get the hand and drag it so it fills eight bars and have a listen to it. So that sounds wonderful with all the percussion, but it really clashes with that bass line. So we could figure out uh, what key the bass line is in, uh, getting a, a piano and just figuring out the note. So I might quickly do that. So I'm inserting a virtual instrument here. All right, so I'm just gonna put in a, uh, why not put in a real rear synth? You're definitely gonna have that plug in on your computer. And I could sit there, bring up view, virtual keyboard. Now have a quick listen to the first note of this bass. That's the note I'm looking for on the piano. And I need to solo that as well. Now that B flat there, or A sharp, seems to my ears to match the key. It seems like it's in B flat minor which is quite far away from D minor. Um, if we want that bass to be really low, we could do a transposition on the bass line of minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight semitones. So let's try right clicking and going item properties. And there's a pitch change. We're gonna try minus eight on that one to move it from like a B flat minor sound to a D minor. And let's have a listen to it. A little bit glitchy, but kind of cool lo-fi sound to it. Let's see if it matches our piano. Now, it, it doesn't exactly match because if you listen to this bass line, is just staying in the same key area the whole time. So what we could do is figure out on our piano where we want the bass to move. So have a listen. Now it actually, it was listed in um, Looperman as D minor, but to my ears, I think it's actually a D major seven chord and then moves up to an F-sharp minor. So we're actually going to have our bass move from a D, then up to an F-sharp. So instead of the minus eight transposition, 
at that point. I'm going to split that and I'm going to change the transposition and figure out how many uh, to get to an F sharp from a B flat. One, two, three, four. Let's change it to minus four and see what this sounds like. And you'd have to obviously use that again. We could just grab both of those, copy that, select that track and paste, paste. And then we'd have our... That sort of fits, you know, that'll do. Oh, hello, it does something different here. So that's giving us the start of our, our loop here. We could choose, actually, I just want to use the first four bars of that piano and loop that. So you could copy, control C and paste it twice. So, so far we've got those layers. You might like to add a, a synth lead layer or a guitar layer um, or more percussion. So hopefully that gives you an idea how you can start to build a loop-based project by using free loops from Looperman. Good luck.